Hi, everybody, and welcome to Teaching Tip Tuesday, brought to you by the Center for Inclusive Teaching and Learning here at UWSP. For the past couple of weeks, I've been discussing how improving the digital accessibility of our courses helps us provide equal access to course materials to all students, regardless of disability status. In this video, I'll talk about some of the advanced features you may consider incorporating into your courses to improve accessibility. Some of these recommendations deal with barriers to learning that affect specific disabled populations. Others touch more generally on aspects of universal design for learning. The first item on today's list is probably something I should have included in the basics video. Whether you're teaching face-to-face -face or online, it's important to have a consistent module design in Canvas. Consider the weekly flow of activities and assignments, making sure that each week has similar materials due at similar times. This makes it easier for all students to plan their time commitment to your course and to stay on track. It's also good to consider having a single overview or learning plan page in each module that provides one-stop access to all the materials associated with the module. This prevents students from having to find where assignments are located. You can live caption all synchronous meetings, which is very helpful to students with hearing impairment and those accessing content in crowded areas. Live captions are available in both Zoom and PowerPoint. In Zoom, just enable closed captions. The AI is pretty good at detecting what you're saying. Students can enable their view of the captions according to their needs. A file is saved in Zoom, and that can be used to provide alternative content forms. In PowerPoint, the live captioning is available in the Slideshow tab. Just enable the subtitles, and you'll have your live captions. Reducing the complexity of wording can be important for hearing-impaired students, neurodivergent students, and students from less privileged educational backgrounds. Remember to spell out acronyms, define new terms, avoid figures of speech and idioms, and if you use them, explain them, because not all of your students have the same background to understand them. Finally, try to avoid jargon that is not directly related to the course. Avoid bright colors and stark color contrasts. What is intended to make our presentations prettier can provide a barrier to neurodivergent students for whom some colors can be triggering. For example, this set of colors is relatively muted and the values are pretty similar. This is considered good. However, these colors are electric, bright, and they're considered bad. I like these colors, but I have to recognize that they could be triggering and present a barrier to many students in obtaining the content that I'm trying to deliver. Remember to keep contrast ratios between text and background at 4.5 to 1 for most text. The starkness of the contrast can be muted if you use either a background that is not pure white or lettering that isn't pure black. Provide multiple forms of content. This helps to ensure that the content is available to all learners. Imagine the barriers to success that a course with only readings presents to a student who has dyslexia. Try to provide content in multiple forms, like video, readings, or podcasts. Providing multiple means of demonstrating learning can also reduce barriers to success that are not related to the achievement of learning outcomes. For example, typing papers may be onerous for a student with a dexterity-related disability. Such students may benefit from being able to demonstrate achievement of the outcome using a presentation. Possibilities include papers, presentations, posters, infographics, and quizzes, and many more. Many neurodivergent students are using a lot of their cognitive load just to maintain routine attendance and submission of assignments. Avoid overburdening them by limiting the use of new programs or technologies in your course unless they are pertinent to the topic of the course. Clear instructions for all assignments with well-described grading criteria are also important for all students. Be sure to specify the level of performance associated with each division on your rubric rather than making the assumption that it's intuitive. Students with compromised executive function may not intuit your desires for a paper otherwise. You can eliminate this barrier through your clarity. Finally, scaffold large projects to provide students with opportunities to receive feedback and to keep them on track to completing projects on time. Students with ADHD and autism spectrum disorders can have a very difficult time planning and executing complex projects without these supports. Attending to these advanced design considerations will reduce barriers to student success, increasing the accessibility and universality of your course. 
For more information, visit the U.S. Department of Education's Office for Civil Rights Web Accessibility video series on YouTube and the CAST.org website for information about universal design for learning. And that's this week's teaching tip, brought to you by the Center for Inclusive Teaching and Learning here at UWSP, your one-stop shop for teaching support. Visit our website to schedule a consultation for help with course design, learning activities, assessment, or pedagogy.